Vocalo Radio, Chicago's only urban alternative nudia in the afternoon here with you. 206 on your clock. And in the studio right now, let me tell you, the whole Vocalo team for at least like a month and a half have been so excited about this guest. If you follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, you might have already seen that we have the voice of the CTA in the studio with us, Lee Crooks. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me on. We are, again, we've been so excited about having you in. <laughs> and you kind of laugh when we told you that. But we, I mean, your voice is epic. Congratulations. You're Thank celebra- you. You're celebrating 25 years. 25 years. Being the voice of the CTA. Yeah, we. it actually hit in 2000, but we recorded in 1998. So I consider that 25 years. That is great. I mean, talk about job stability, right? <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> because, you know, I was, you know, reading some things. And in 1998, back then, auditions had to be mailed in, right? They did have to be mailed in. I had to FedEx the audition in on a CD. Yeah. So for all all you Gen Zs, a mail is... <laughs> you, you you had to put a was it a cassette or a CD? Uh, at that point, we were starting to burn CDs. Be- okay. Not not long before that, it was cassettes, and uh, we were you know we all had little home studios so we can do auditions. And uh, my agent sent me an audition email actually, and uh, <laughs> they were looking for a new voice for uh, the trains, not the buses at that point. So I recorded it at my home studio and sent it via FedEx on a CD. And I, I, I love this because, you know, if you don't really, a lot of people have jobs that people don't think about, you know, being the voice right. of the CTAs, people are like, oh my gosh, yeah, someone needs to do that. That's actually a job. So um, a little background, Lee is an American voice artist. Uh, he first worked as an audio engineer and then he transitioned to the voice industry in the early 1990s, the late 1900s, as, <laughs> as some of the kids on TikTok are saying. Uh, he has done voice work for commercials, audiobooks, the Discovery Channels, America's Deadliest Storm, uh, Walmart, Kellogg's, Fruit Loops, and True Value. I mean, just the yeah. list goes on. I can't be here all day to read all your credentials, but you've done so many things as a voice artist. And it's funny because the city of Chicago knows you best for being the voice of the CTA. But you said you actually got some inspiration when you were at Disneyland, right? For your uh, audition. Disney World. Disney, Disney World. World. My, yeah. my family had just gotten back from Disney World. Uh, the email was in, sitting in my email box, and they said they're uh, looking for a train voice. And I'm going like, what does a train voice sound like? I had no idea. And then I thought, oh, we had just ridden the monorail down in Disney World. And I remember very distinctly what the guy sounded like. Uh, Mark something is his name. And he was the voice of Disney for a long time. And so I just did my imitation of that within the parameters of what CTA wanted me to do. Yes, because uh, these auditions, they could be a little vague, right? And you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, (laughs) They're just like, do it. And if we like it, you're hired. And you're like, they're very often, that's exactly what they are. <laughs> and being an audio person, you probably listen very closely to audio noises more than the normal person. Uh, like a, yeah, right? like I a lot of people do. wouldn't have noticed that train voice, but you noticed it. Oh, yeah, I definitely noticed it. Um, you know, I was I was getting going in voiceover at that point, And so I was listening to any kind of recorded voice to see, oh, man, that might be something to keep in mind for my uh, resume, you know, as, as a as a reference. And so you were an audio engineer and then what kind of made you for like 11 years, right? Yes. What kind of made you make that switch into becoming, you know, a voiceover artist? Well, I had a recording studio for uh, uh, roughly 10 years, 10, 11 years. I, I sold the studio and then a year after I continued to be a recording engineer, but not owning the studio. And whatever my voice sounds like, it's always sounded like. So I would occasionally have clients say, well, why don't you try to do some voiceover work here? We'll stick you behind the mic. And of course, I didn't know what I was doing (laughs) and crashed and burned terribly. But uh, when the student, it's hard to make a living as a recording engineer. And so Mm -hmm. I was sort of, that's why I sold the studio and I was looking around for something else to do. And my lovely wife said, well, why don't you try doing voiceovers? You've, you know, you've been told you have a good voice. Give it a try. So I came down here. Got some training with a gentleman named Ray Van Steen, made a demo tape, and I'm still here. You know what? Let's do a little clap. Also, shout out, clap for your (laughs) wife, okay? (laughs) 
She's a real one. We, we, have to, we have to give some claps for all the supportive partners out there. She's very supportive. Um, because cause I love it because a lot of people nowadays, there's this big thing of like, you know, get get a normal job, right? Get, get a right. real job. And, you know, these are real jobs. You know, being a voiceover it artist is. is a real job. You know, being a radio host is a real job. Yep. These are just creative jobs. And, you know, not not as not as normal as other jobs. Not as ordinary as other jobs yeah. you know but it, it's, it's we still live a pretty normal life i don't think that i'm doing anything odd you know i live in the suburbs and you know have a car and a house so yeah so did you think like when you sent in the audition tape and you first got the gig did you think it would last 25 years this oh gig? heck no <laughs> Oh, I, I figured this was the five to ten year thing, and then uh -huh. they would uh, move on to another voice, and uh, it just kept going. That's and, that's beautiful. I know. I'm grateful as heck. <laughs> and I, you, you have to tell this story. So you even kind of this is kind of infiltrated a lot of different spectrums of your life mm -hmm. to where it even infiltrated your daughter's wedding right can you tell it us did. the story you have to tell it, the story it, it did so uh my daughter got married a couple of years ago and she, her she and her husband now husband have friends in chicago so right before i did the you know obligatory father of the bride speech i went over to my daughter and said is there anything you want me to say and she goes can you give a shout out to our chicago friends in your cta voice and i said yeah so some you know i introduced myself you know thanked everybody for coming and i said and by the way for the table over here this is state and lake and <laughs> and you said the crowd went in an uproar yeah right? and everybody <laughs> la laughed and clapped and so they loved it i i love that and um the the funny thing is that people may not know before you um the like train conductors would have to make the announcement yes and it was really, you know, I've seen a lot of comments about it. And people said, like, you never understood what they were saying because they weren't that interested in, like, saying the announcements, you know? No, they were all, oh, this is Illinois coming up and the you know, doors open on the left. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that they, they all sounded muffled and uh, they're, they're, they're busy driving the train. Right? right. Like, they're not really. Which is what you want them to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and then your voice came along because I, I was reading this comment. It said that. um. You know, a lot of the times you weren't able to hear the conductor saying it. Um, but someone remembered that there was this one conductor that at each stop, they would say what good restaurants were there and the rental rates for the apartments in the area. Really? Yes. That this oh, person that, went, that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah, that this person went above and beyond and that sometimes they would even throw the weather forecast in there. Hmm. So at each stop, they'd say what restaurants were there to eat. Hmm. And then they would say the rental rates. Which I think is a lot to fit in, right? That's a lot to fit in, and I'm, I may have to talk to the CTA about that. We can add, <laughs> we can add some restaurants, and uh, I don't know about rental rates, but uh, that would, I like that. You like, okay? Okay, we're getting ideas here. Yes. Um, and a funny thing is that you know when you first went in to do the the, the drops for the CTA, is it true they had you count from one to a thousand? They did, yes, um, because every run, every train run has a number so it would say this is red line train and then you would the conductor when they get in they punch in you know 372 and so the computer will automatically add the 372 to the this is red line train number 372 or run 372 so um i had to go 372 373 374 ad nauseum. How long? Yeah. Okay. How do you power through that mental? That must be more of a mental thing, right? It was shut my eyes and <laughs> and we at every 50 to 100 we stopped. We kind of listened back to the beginning because my pitch would drift and my energy would flag and mm. you know kind of had to bring it back up and try to keep it the same and uh, so it took about an hour and a half. And I was gonna say, you know, doing doing the voice for 25 years. Um, your voice changes like like mm -hmm. through life because even you know i go back to some of my college demos my yeah. voice was 
pitch is higher. Yep. Right. I talked way faster than I do now. Yep. So I was gonna say, how do you how do you deal with those voice changes or even like protecting your voice? It's really hard. Um, it's it's been 25 years, and I'm trying to match things I did 25 years ago to sound like the same person. Uh, I've read things that people have said, yeah, his voice has changed. It's not, it's not the same, but it, you can tell it's the same guy, but he's a little bit older, and that's just life. Um, I do try to hydrate regularly. I mm. practice as regularly as I can. I was I was warming up in the car on the way down here. I was wondering that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I spent about an hour singing and doing voice exercises <laughs> and uh, breathing exercises just because I knew I was going to be on the air. I, I love that. And, and we're going to get to a song. We're going to come back and we're going to have you read uh, not mean tweets. We're going to have you read nice comments from people because there was this video that Block Club did of you in 2015. It yep. almost has 200,000 views, by the way, that video. Wow. You, no, yeah. I had no idea. They had this video of you sitting on the trains, talking to people, doing the announcements. Like, I don't oh, know. Oh, I knew that video. Yeah. I just didn't know it had 200,000. Yeah, no, no. I went to wow. it the other day. It had almost 200,000 views, has almost 200 comments. And I was looking through and I was like, if he needs to know that if he's ever having a bad day, he needs to come to this comment section. There was not one mean comment out of all these comments. So I saw them. I was like, you know what? He needs to see these. So we're going to have you read these beautiful comments people left about you being the voice of the CTA. And we're going to have you uh, we're going to have you close us off this break with uh, our first drop. OK, we'll let you take we'll let you take the wheel. This is the last stop. Navy Pier. To Vocalo Radio, 91.1 FM. This is what Chicago sounds like. Doors closing. Vocalo Radio, 91.1 FM, Chicago's only NPR music station and your only urban alternative. In the studio, let me get my my claps ready again. We have uh, the voice of the CTA, Lee Crooks, with us. Hello. Hi there. So we've been talking, we've been chatting. If you missed um, the last talk break where we left off i was saying this video block club chicago did of you in 2015 almost has 200,000 views and it's just you on the cta train and mm -hmm. i looked at the comment section and i was like i've never seen a corner of the, the internet this supportive of someone <laughs> so we're gonna have you read some of these comments that people left about you and uh you could you could uh just chime in on on what you think about them all right um Okay, this is the first time I'm seeing these. But yeah, you have. We, we kept them a secret from you. Uh, let's see. Uh, love that guy. He helped so many people and bring. He helped so many people and bring positive impression of the city. Um, you want me to say that? I don't need. Yeah, to no, say no. The, you don't. You don't need to say the name. But okay. If you want to comment on something, you can. Uh, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, he became a symbol to us Chicagoans. Uh, I've heard that I've heard that a few times, and it's sort of hard for me to wrap my head around. That... Does it make you like a little nervous, or does it? How does it make yeah, you feel? Yeah, it's it's, kind of, it's just a, there's a responsibility there. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I like this one. He should get free rides for life, which I don't. I was gonna say, can, <laughs> can you clear the record about you riding the CTA? The, the truth is, I live in Milwaukee, so I don't. I, I know this is scandalous, but I don't really <laughs> ride the CTA that much because I have to drive in from Milwaukee, which is Amtrak. Yeah. So, so um, he is to the CTA what Jim Cornelison, am I saying that right? Yeah, I, I Cornelison so. is to the national anthem. Which is the Bears, right? He did the uh, the Bears national anthem. Wow. Or something. That's yeah. a that is a compliment. This is the voice of my childhood. I loved hearing Pulaski. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the other one? Oh, well, okay. What a legend. And uh, Chicago, Portland, and Boston are my three favorite transit voices. Do you know any of the other transit voices? I don't. You guys don't have a group chat or anything? You would think. You know, we, we would have a, like a little club that we, you know, a bar that we would get together yeah. at. Or, you know, but we, no, we don't have anything like that. There's another, uh, there's a woman in Chicago who does some, I think, suburban uh, New York trains. Um, I don't know if I can mention her name, but um, she is the only one I, I've met. And he, she's not the main voice of New York. It's one of them. It's more of a, uh, I think it's suburban or maybe cities outside of 
New York. Oh, the Metropolitan. But that's the only one I've met. I haven't met uh, my L.A. version or the D.C. version or the New York version. So, oh, okay, that's crazy. Yeah. And w- was that the last? I think we have like one, one more on there. Um. Nope, I got them all. No, that's it. No, that's I, all. I got them all. I was seeing a lot of them. Um, unless, you, unless you see one on no, there. No, no, a okay. lot of. Uh, oh, I didn't read the other side. Oh, this is no, no. This is just it. This is uh, one that I wrote down. Someone said, "Lord, these video clips make me homesick." Oh, so a lot wow. of people saying that they that your voice makes them homesick. It makes them miss oh, Chicago. That's really kind. Is that that's kind that's, of crazy to hear, right? It's really crazy to hear, but uh, I'm honored. And that's why I said, if you're ever having a bad day, head to the comment section of that video <laughs> and you will feel like a brand new person. I think I will do that. Um, and so I was going to say, being being the voice of the CTA, you know, how much longer do you think you will be the voice? Uh, I will be the voice as long as they have me. You're going to write it out. You're I'm going to write it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll be doing it a hundred. You know, go, this is stayed in Lake, you know, so. <laughs> but yeah, as long as they'll have me. Um, I will be happy to do it. We love we love to hear it. Thank you again, Lee Crook, so much for stopping by the studio. It's been a complete blast. And we have one more drop for oh. you to leave us leave us off yeah. with. This is Lee Crooks, the voice of the CTA. And you're listening to Vocal Radio. <laughs> See, I can't take two. Take two. <laughs> yeah, it happens. This is Lee Crooks, the voice of the CTA, and you're listening to Vocalo Radio. This is State in Lake.